I want, we're gonna, if you're done with flying logos, um, show them to me if you haven't and I'll mark you off. Uh, we're gonna move on to other things now. <laughs> and the other thing we're gonna move on to is a project that you have to define. We'll talk about it separately. Uh, and I'm gonna show you some technologies related to that. Um, what I wanna show you today is a little bit of ICE, which is a particle system built within soft image that also will get into things like uh, node-based programming and uh, node-based graphics programs in particular. Um, I was going to, I was working on uh, figuring out some things in ICE, particularly stuff about explosion. <laughs> and I wanna cover today how you would take an object, how you would break it into pieces, and then how you would make it appear to explode using a few different technologies, but tying it all together with this thing called ICE, okay? So I'm starting here in just our basic layout, and I want you to see that ICE has its own bar over here. Um, it supposedly stands for Interactive Creative Environment. I don't know if it really does anymore, but that's what they say. And there's a layout that helps, which is this. Uh, when you're working in ICE, you need to be able to access your whole scene, which is over here in the Explorer. And this is where the ice tree is. The ice tree is the connection of nodes you put together to make something happen. And over here is where you see the result, okay? Now, I'm gonna take any object and I'm gonna break it up into a bunch of pieces and then I want those pieces to be able to fly apart. And I'm gonna do that 90% within ice so you can see how it happens. First, I need an object and I'll pick um, I'll pick anything. Uh, you know what I'll pick actually, because I was thinking about this. I'm gonna pick the T-Rex. So this is a T-Rex primitive that just sits there, right? Now you'll notice it comes in here. Uh, it actually comes in as a model, which is kind of strange, but this is where the geometry is. Now, I have to remember this because there's documentation on this that I do wanna show you. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that quick so you can see where it is. If I go to Softimage Help, which will be over here, and I uh, search on explosion, actually shatter, they have a system here for how you shatter stuff. Uh, build the slice planes, create, and we're gonna go through this first because it's the first part of it. So you can check it over here. I might even have to refer to this. Um, the first thing is I need a new object that's going to hold the cut up pieces of T-Rex. So I'm going to make a, a blank object. I'm gonna go to primitive and I'm gonna go to polygon mesh and to empty. And actually I'm gonna rename it to um, shattered T-Rex. And this is just what it sounds like. It's a polygonal object with nothing in it. And then I need a point cloud. Um, particles as a, as a field, basically everything you've dealt with 3D wise has consisted of points connected by lines formed to polygons to make solid objects. Particle animation and technology is where you take just points and you make them do things. You use physics to make them appear to fall, you use um, animation things to make them appear to move, and then with those points, which are called a point cloud, you make geometry out of them, or you make rain out of them, or you make smoke out of them, or fire, anything that isn't solid. And even sometimes things that are solid, like you can do things like uh, leaves, you can do things like sparks, because when you get down to it, all the 3D programs are points swimming in space. Particle engines are just the points. So you make the points do something, then you make them look like something. For that, I need a particle cloud. Um, I'm going to take an empty point cloud. And you'll see, I can pick other point clouds, but I'm gonna go under empty. Okay, now, if I remember this right, under point cloud, I'm going to put an ice tree in it. And you'll see this is down where I look at my ice trees. I'm gonna just reload that. I'm going to go under create. I have point cloud selected, I'm gonna pick ice tree, not simulated ice tree for this particular task. And if I look under point cloud, you'll see there's now something called an ice tree down here. Now to that, I have to attach this thing about breaking this thing up into planes. Uh, it's called build slice planes. This is another node. 
This is node-based, node-based software. I'm going to say node-based software because there's 2D software that works this way, 3D software, there's design software. The idea behind a piece of node-based software is that you have these things called nodes. Nodes are actually small programs on their own. And the way a node tree works is you drag the program out and then you connect it from one to the other. And in this case, everything goes from left to right. So the first thing will run and then it will end up over here, which is where whatever happens, happens. All the nodes I have are here. Notice I put plan in there, I'm going to take that out. You'll see there's lots of them. Uh, actually, that's just under SciFlex. If I go to crowds, deformations, there are thousands of little programs in here that do stuff. Under this, here's another array of them. Okay, it can be tricky to find what you want. That's actually why they have a search tool up there. Now, this is the thing that's going to put points randomly through this thing and then actually cut some spaces out of it so that I can make a new object that is all out of pieces. Um, execute makes it run. I'm going to plug that in and it will stay red, note. Stays red because red means it's not working yet. It needs stuff. Um, the polygon mesh source, I think maybe just that. I'm going to go here to T-Rex and I'm going to drag it in here and watch what happens when I do. It gives me a new node. It's getting the T-Rex stuff and if I take its output and go over here, uh, polygon mesh source, polygon name. I hooked that up and it turned green. Did you see that? When it turned green, this meant that it's ready to run. See those little black things in there? See those? Those, that's my new point cloud. My new point cloud was made, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to select this and I'm going to hide it with the H key. The new point cloud was made from this build slice planes node. Um, how, many, how many pieces of T-Rex do I want when I'm done? That's over here. I can pick how many points it's going to be. I could put in 200. And you'll see it will look sort of roughly where the T-Rex is. See that? Uh, do I want things inside the T-Rex or do I want things just on the surface? If I do this, it will just be outside. See? If I turn that off, it will show everything. And like anything in Soft Image, which is great, I can always click this and I'll get the documentation on that node. See that over there? Let's go back over here. Okay. I'm going to put that down to 100 because I don't need that many of them. Um, and I'm going to unhide my T-Rex. Notice in my Explorer here when I've hit something, it has a little H next to it. So if I turn that off, he reappears like that. Uh, I'm going to leave him out there for right now. Now, I'm going to go to my empty object, which is this here. Now in this object, let me reload this area here so we see there's no tree on it. I'm going to make another ice tree like that. And I actually have a tool that will put my shattered stuff in here. Uh, S-H-A-T-T. -T. There it is. Create basic shatter from point cloud. It's red, meaning it's not going to run. I can plug it into execute. It's still red. It's not going to run. Um, it needs both the point cloud and the geometry. Uh, here's my point cloud. I'm going to click and pull it down. And here's my geometry. I'm going to click and pull it down. And you know what? I'll, put them, I'll move them around like this. And this works like any other window. I can zoom in and out. I can use my S key to get around, right? Uh, I'm going to take the out name here. And I'll plug it into point cloud name. Good. And I'll take the out name here. And I'll plug this into my polygon mesh name. And watch what happens up there. Nothing, because I didn't get it right. Oh, oh. It could crash. That could happen, too. Ah, it came back to me. It even hooked up. Which means that it, 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 it actually did. This is my busted up T-Rex. Uh, let's go to OpenGL. You can see sort of where the pieces are. Uh, there's even another tool. If I click any of these, I get a property panel about it. So if I click this, is it that one? Oh, you know what? I have to go back to a different tree. And I want to show you this. This is my formerly empty object. 
which now has an ice tree in it, which is this ice tree right here. Uh, I'm going to turn off the lock so you can see as I go to these places. If I go down to the point cloud, I have another ice tree here, which is where we made where those things are going to be. If I double click this one, good. I can say how much space is between, in, is between each piece. Come on, you can do this. Yep. I should save. I'm going to save. If we make it back on this, what I'm going to save. Yes, good. Are we back? I hope we're back. We'll give it a sec. I think it will come back to me. I, I, 100 points is maybe a lot to ask. Um, but this is okay. I'm going to save this because I put this much work into it already. Save as. And I'll go into our basic C drive. And I'm going to call this, um, this T-Rex Shatter. I shouldn't put a space in. Never use spaces. T-Rex Shatter 1. Okay, now I'm going to turn down the number of pieces. I was going to turn it down to 30 pieces. You'll watch this will redo its thing and probably, yes, good. And now you can see more clearly that this new object is made of hunks of T-Rex. See that? Um, I can even change, I should be able to make this much wider now. We should see it. It should be sort of interactive. Is it going to be sort of interactive for me? Yeah, sort of. It can get some ugly geometry sometimes. Like that's a bit of ugly geometry down there. I'm not going to worry about it too much, but let's see if we turn this up and do just surface cuts. Yeah, that seems a little bit cleaner. Okay, I'm going to move those insets back in so it's a little bit tighter. I've done that. I now want to make this thing come apart. I need physics simulations. Um, what we've done so far is we've just basically, we've taken an object, we've created a particle cloud from that object using this node right here, and then we've created a new object using the particle cloud and the T-Rex to make this object made of separate pieces that'll break, right? Now, to make them break convincingly, I'm going to use something called SciFlex. Um, SciFlex is actually a cloth simulator. Um, you know what, let me pull this down here. And if I look up SciFlex, you should see a lot. It's actually an external thing that Softimage gives you that does stuff like shirts and things like that. Um, there are other ways to do it, but we have a fairly fast way of doing it with ICE and SciFlex. Um, if I go over here, I'm gonna lose that. There's a separate SciFlex bar here. So we have all these nodes which are literally just about SciFlex. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shattered T-Rex, which is this guy here. I'm going to put another ice tree on him. Um, I'm going to go create, and I'm going to create a simulated ice tree because I need simulation for this to work. And you'll see that's higher up. Do you see that? Anything I'm doing in Stop the Mod, it always keeps a record of it as I go. And there's what's called an operator stack, which is each thing I do to the object. That operator stack goes this way, and this can be a lot of information, but it's not that you have to know all this, it's good that you keep it in mind. There's a reason for all this stuff to be out there. Um, these levels here are the order in which stuff happens, and you notice there's a special level called simulation. This new ice tree, which doesn't have anything on it, is in this simulation level. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my busted up T-Rex and I'm going to turn them into cloth with a node called SciFlex cloth, like that. Uh, I pump that into here. Ah, I pump that into uh, here. And, ba -ba 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 -ba. good. Actually, to tell you the truth, I think that will just work. Like, watch what happens when I hit play. He has gravity on him automatically. This is an important thing about SciFlex. If I open it up, do you see that value there, gravity, y, point zero, or negative zero point one? That is the force of the gravity on, on my T-Rex right now. Um, let's put in a different object just so you can see how this goes. Uh, I'm gonna put in a, I'll put in a disc, why not? I don't use discs enough. And we'll make it much bigger like that. Um, and I'm gonna layer it down a little bit because I do not want him overlapping with the thing. Let's lose the grid. 
Okay, and you notice this changed because I didn't have that locked. Let's go back to that ice tree and we'll lock it here. Now I want to make him interact with this grid. Um, Cyflex Collide Mesh. I'm going to put this over here. And that's a force, which means I'm going to pipe it over here and you'll see it'll give me a choice. Force. Okay, and then actually I might want to zoom out here and get more room. We'll do that like that. Uh, what is it going to collide with? We'll take this disc here. Oh, I didn't leave that locked. Let me go back down here. Let me lock it. Now let me take that disc. And I'm going to pump that disc. We'll put the ice tree there. We'll put that there. We'll put this here. And then you can see the disc should go here. You know what? If I click this, it will open up the ports. Uh, geometry. It wants the pink one. See how the colors match? Geometry. Okay. That means this should happen. Bam. That's actually not bad out of the box, I have to say, right? Like, that doesn't look awful. Like, interestingly, I could get away with that as is. And by the way, if I add more frames to it, um, let's add like 800 frames. Uh, you'll see, you know, with the right shaders and what have you, ah, with the right shaders, you could sell this gag, I think. Like that. Um, let me show you some other parameters about it. Uh, and then I could, you know, you can give it a shot if you want. Um, if I look, let's go back over here to the cloth and the gravity. Let's make the gravity much lighter, more like gravity on the moon. If I put in a zero here, this will now not fall as fast. And might be a reaction I like better, it might be a reaction I like, I don't like as much. That's up to me, you can play with these parameters. Another thing that's happening is the pieces are actually overlapping. If I don't want the pieces to overlap, I have to put in another node, which is called Cyflex Collide Self, I believe. Yeah, there it is. And I have to pump this in as a force. If I go over here, plug that in as a force, and let's see if we hit play what happens. That ain't good. <laughs> but that is actually um, more likely with this very light gravity what would happen when the parts are close to each other, like that. Um, let me change my gravity back and we'll see if he doesn't fly apart as much. He flies apart less, but he's still got pieces flying around there. To get him to not fly apart, I'd have to go into Cyflex Collide Self and play with some of these settings. Um, the envelope is actually the, um, the area around it, it's looking to see if it interacts with stuff. So if I make this smaller, let me see if making it smaller, and by the way, another good time to save. Um, T-Rex Shatter 2. Because cloth simulations and physics simulations can be very demanding processor-wise, so saving as you go isn't a bad idea. I'm going to uh, make the envelope a little bit smaller, well, one-tenth of its size, and see if that helps me. That did help me a lot. And that gives me a very different result, and might even be the result I want, I don't know. I'd have to play around with it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call that 